Have you ever noticed that sometimes the drips off of an acrylic pour are the prettiest part of the painting? I've totally run into that a lot of times. And because of that, I wanna see if I can't harness that and actually create a pour that all it is, is drips. So the first thing I need for an acrylic pour is obviously paint. I have decided to use a lot of Blick paints with this one Pebeo uh, color that I really like. It's a color shift red. And I'm gonna make my own palette based on this that I found on coolers.co. While I'm doing this, uh, I learned a lot of this from Chris Breyer, my friend. If you want to learn how to mix your own paints, I highly recommend you take a look at this course that he has. So first of all, I'm gonna create the pink. Uh, the pink is kind of on the purpley side, so I need to use a lot of white because it's very light and uh, add a little bit of uh, blue to, to make it a little bit purple and I get the color that I need. For the green, it's a little bit harder. Uh, I was actually going for the lighter gray here, but I used too much yellow, so it kind of turned green. So then I pivoted and went to uh, try and create this light green. The gray, mostly blue. Uh, it's kind of on the reddish side and then lots of black. And then I used a little bit of white to kind of lighten it up a little bit. And the last one is similar to a Payne's gray. Might be a little bit lighter than that, but again, it's on the slightly on the purple side. With all of these, I'm doing about one part paint, one, just a little bit more than one part of pouring medium. My pouring medium in this case is 70% Craft Smart white glue and 30% water. And then I'm going to add water to get the consistency I want. Now with a drip pour, because it's dripping out of the cup, any consistency will work. The thinner it is, the more it's gonna mix. The thicker it is, the bigger the hole is gonna to have to be to allow it to drip out of the cup. So in this case, I'm gonna to try to use a um, kind of a medium, medium thin consistency paint. I don't want it to drip too far because the farther that it drips, the more it mixes. And I did show you all about that in this video here, if you're interested. All right, so the next problem I'm gonna have is how am I going to get my cup, which I'm gonna use these five ounce cups. I have a 10 by 20 canvas, that's 200 square inches, plus the side is another 30 square inches. Divide that by 25 and I get about nine ounces of paint I need, so two five ounce cups will get me where I need to. So I'm gonna try and suspend two five ounce cups. Uh, at first I thought I could use these strings that I used for my barbecue pour, where I hung my barbecue here and then I poured on top of that and let it drip down. Um, I don't think that's gonna work. One, if I put my cup into those, it wouldn't be centered and it would kind of lean over depending on what it was. I guess I could probably do a one of the ties that they do for plants and things but that would really put my cup way up here and I don't want it dripping that far. The farther the paint drips, the more it's gonna mix down here. So I want my, my cups to be pretty close to the canvas so it's not uh, mixing as much. So that's probably out of it. I think what I'm gonna do is use my green frog tape and tape one side, go up and over my my post here, come down and put it on the other side and then put a piece of tape all the way around to just kind of secure it. And then I can let it sit wherever I want to. So let's see if I can set that up and make that work. All right, so now I have my two pieces of tape hanging off there. I'm gonna attach my cups. All right, it's ugly, but I think this is gonna work. That is maybe five inches off the ground there. And then I have two on both sides of my painting. So next we need to find out how big this hole needs to be with this paint to make it drip like I want. So I'm gonna get a test cup. I have a little bit too much paint here, so I'm gonna do a test cup hole and see if we can't figure out how the, the size of the hole to make it drip the best. Okay, so we're, I'm just gonna use this pencil because I have the tip and I can make it um, super small at the one side and super, tall at the other, I can make lots of different sizes of holes. So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it from the top. If I do it from the bottom, then it sends those little shreds of paper upwards and it's harder for the paint to get in and all the paint won't, won't come out. So I wanna do this from the bottom or from the top. And as you can see, I barely did a teeny tiny hole. So we're gonna see how the paint flows out of that. Just as my protection, I'm gonna put that in first.
I'm gonna do a little bit of all the paints. I don't really need to do that, but I'd like to see how the paints mix as they come out too, so. And again, the more paint that's gonna be in there, the, the, the more force it's gonna have pushing down to make that paint flow. So again, this is just a tiny pinprick. Even that's not quite enough. You can see how big that hole turned into. It's about half of the tip of the pencil. So we're gonna poke those holes into these two, put the piece of tape on, tape on top and get to pouring. So next we're gonna fill our cups. So the first paint I put in is gonna be the bottom. The last paint I put in is gonna be the top. So I think I want the, the base to be the darker colors and then the lighter colors to show up on top. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of the darker colors first and then a little bit uh, separated uh, second. All right, so let's see how this works. So far it's only dripped out maybe a fifth of the paint. Now one thing I worry about is if it takes too long, then the outside will start to dry and then it kind of won't push and I'll get uh, clumps of paint. That's why I keep dipping my um, pencil into them just to keep it, keep it moving so I don't get drying along the outside, especially on a dry canvas like this. It can wick the moisture out of the paint as it's there if it's not flowing over each other then it could start to dry out. But you're really starting to see some of the blue, the darker blue here, and little spots of red every once in a while. I'm hoping that they come out better. It's also fascinating to see, this one's been swinging a little bit. So you kind of get that swinging motion. See how this one swings just a little bit. This one's been keeping pretty much in the center. So you get a very even pattern there. So interesting how different those are. All right, before we tilt, I just want to get in a little bit closer so you can see the different patterns. The red is kind of interrupting. I had a little splotch there that I dripped off of the pencil. And I have a little bit of red on the outside. But interesting how alike and similar those are at the same time. 
Now I'm gonna adjust my camera so you guys can see me tilt and then we'll be back. And this happening here is just because the canvas isn't pulled super tight. So as it got wet, it's it, the canvas is, is pulling itself apart and it's making a little gully right there. You'll see that with lower quality. This is a student level. Canvas, so you'll see that quite a bit with canvases like this. That's why I like to kind of help everything move along a little bit on the edges. Now that I have all the paint down, this middle section is my favorite. So I think I want to dump off some of this. I won't be able to do a lot, but at least some of it. All right, I am blown away at how pretty this came out. Because it, with the very small drops that happen, I get tons of fine line details. The red will because it, it is metallic, will really show through once this dries. That will kind of shine through the other paints. But look at these super fine details here, so pretty. I really like how that turned out. Next time I might use a little bit more pink, a little bit more red, just to keep it from getting so dark. But even the way it is now, I really like how this, this turned out. And not bad for a software developer that never thought he could ever do art. Acrylic pouring is one of those arts that I think anyone can do. And if you're interested in this and want to get started with acrylic paint pouring, this is the video for you.